I know if you got it by those that laugh. Those that don't laugh didn't get it. <laughs> don't just laugh now just because. Here's the thing, right? Pros, relatively quick turnaround. Con, relatively slow turnaround. Can be profitable, can be unprofitable. Can be. Point is, right, don't fall in love with flips because you watch them on TV, okay? For most people, it's not the first thing you do. You know when you're the most dangerous? Let me tell you when. When you have money, okay? When you have money, you're the most dangerous. Do you want to know why? Because you feel invincible, because you can do it. I can buy that house cash, I can flip, I make all this money. You're the one that's going to lose the money, okay? When you don't have money, you're a lot more careful. You're a lot more researched, you know? I, and do you know how I know that? Because that's what I was told, and that's exactly what I didn't do. I had money, and I thought, I'm invincible. And you know what I did? I bought a bunch of houses, all oh, crap, right? I didn't know. That's what I'm telling you. Everything I'm sharing with you is from experience, right? It's not from a book. So if you have money, now it doesn't mean you don't deploy that money. Of course you do, but you need to know. And what I hate is that you talk to one person who's made money on flips and thinks it's awesome, and they're going to give you the top pros. They're not going to tell you any of the cons. Or you talk to the person who's screwed up and will give you the bottom stuff and go, never do it, it's the worst thing. The, the answer to most real estate questions is, it depends, right? If you have good partners, you go, yeah, you can make lots of money flipping. Of course you can. But don't just go into it expecting it's good because it's on TV, okay? I just, I want to drill that into you. I'm trying to help you, right? Some of you will not listen to this. Some of you will do it anyway. Congratulations. You've just joined the list of those people that we buy it cheaper from later on. Right? <laughs> don't be those people. Right? Love you. Love you, but don't do it. All right. See, that was a joke, so you missed it. See? See? All right? Some of you still missed it. That's good. So, 3 a.m., 3 a.m., that one. So, ARV, you'll hear. These are just little terms. ARV, after repair value. Um, so I want to look at a live example of how I would look at ARV, and again, Mike, just close your eyes, man, because I know you're a professional, but I'm going to do it maybe a little bit different, but, uh, but I'm going to show you how, to, how I determine ARV, and, and the truth is, you know, he, here's, here's one thing, you can go to three different realtors and get three different opinions, okay? The truth is, ARV is a science, it's not, uh, sorry, it's an art, it's not a science. There is science to it, but it's also art. And, uh, but what I want to do is just dispel some of those things, those myths or things that people look for that they're told, well, this means this. It doesn't, okay? And you can talk to Mike later and he can correct me if I'm wrong, but not publicly, just privately. So only, not, only a few people find out. Just a couple of things quickly, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll go into the thing after I get, get out of this slide. So if you're looking to do a flip, this is a formula. Again, formulas are formulas. You know, sometimes you can do better or worse. I just think this is a safe way to do it. Offer 70% of ARV, less repairs. Okay. If you can get a deal like that on the contract, even as a wholesaler, you can normally find an investor to flip it to. So what does that mean? Let's use the whiteboard, because we can. All right. Someone was like, can you explain the curtain thing to me? Like, I did. Like, I missed it. So if you missed the curtain thing, just ask your neighbor. It was about the pooplex. Okay. So house is what... Can everyone see this? Is this too small? Okay. House is $100,000, for those of you watching the video. House is $100,000, okay? It needs $20,000 in repairs, okay? Let's just say this is the ARV, right? That's what it'll be worth when it's done. Okay? What do we want to offer this person for the house? How much? 56000 you got to speak. I can't hear you. 84? No. Okay. So remember, 70% of ARV, less repairs. What's 70% of ARV? No, let's just go with one. 70000 Less repairs. So how much do we offer them? 50000 Right? Okay? That's just a quick method for calculating if this deal is worth doing. Are there times when you can buy at 80% of ARV and still make money? Yeah. But if you want to play that game, right? If you can get it for 60% of ARV, even better. I'm just saying 70 tends to be a safe figure. It's not bulletproof. Don't write to me or come and talk to me if you lost money doing it at 70. I'm just saying it's a safe bet, right? Generally speaking. So that's just something that, that you want to keep in the back of your mind. But guess what? If you have no money right now, you have no money, but you know someone that's going, and please hear me, I'm not talking about preying on people, okay? Amen? Right? Christians. 
right? But like, if you know someone that say it's getting divorced or is going through a tough time and there's some issue, right? You can help them out of a bad spot. You can calculate. You can, you can look at it and say, you know what? I know that this it'll be better for them to be out of this situation. You can pull the deal together and you can find someone to sell it to because those numbers they're attractive to everybody. Does that make sense? So if you just use the formula, you can find people to sell to even if you have no money right now. Because I guarantee you, all of you know people. And those people know other people. And oftentimes, that's where the deals come from, where people know what you do. And so as long as you're a connector of people and you know some basics, you can calculate these things and actually find deals literally out of thin air. You don't have to do anything. You can make five or 10 grand on a deal just by doing some basic math, which some of you really struggled with. <laughs> I'd, encourage you, I'd encourage you to do the formula, right? Make sense? Good? I mean, can you do that? Can you just look at what's it worth versus, right? Now you might say, well, how do we, how do we, uh, how do we determine ARV? How do we, we'll talk about ARV in a minute. How do I determine, uh, you know, what the repairs are? How do you find a contractor to look for repairs? Huh? Right, you go to your meetup group, right? You find someone, you butter them up, right? You take them out to lunch and you say, hey, you know, Jimmy, can I give you 50 bucks, 100 bucks? Would you just mind doing a walkthrough of this house with me just... You know, just give me half an hour of your time. You might do two or three of those until you find the good one. But man, you can make five or 10 grand on it. It's not a bad day. You agree? Do you need money to do that, really? No. Huh. Do you have the things that you need to know to be able to get started down this track? Yes. All right. So the only thing left is whether you do it or not, okay? It's really that simple. And guess what your, what, 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 what is your risk in going down this path, right? Other than some time spent, what's your risk? You haven't really spent any money, you haven't done anything. You don't even own the property in that scenario, right? You can do it. The excuse that I don't have money, that's nonsense. That's the biggest lie. And people just use that either because they just genuinely don't know or, you know, it just keeps them bound. Just remember a couple of things. So market can turn when you're in the middle of a flip. Is this good? Can you still hear me? Okay. So market can turn. What I mean by that is if you've got a flip that's going to take you six to 12 months, the market can turn during that time. Hopefully it doesn't, but it can. So when you're doing your ARV, you need to consider that. You need to give yourself some cushion. Now, if the, the market can turn both ways. It can go up. You can be expecting to make only a certain amount. You end up a lot more, but it can also go down. And so you've got to be careful that you're not line balling it so that if it shifts a little bit, you end up getting burned because a lot of people do that. And so they, they buy and then the market's turned or for whatever reason there's an issue or it might be where you're doing it um, you know, in a location that, for example, if you were selling a house in Vail, Right? You might get a better price. I don't know. Mike, you can tell me. Uh, you might get a better price in the winter when people are in the ski trip and they're feeling nostalgic about skiing the slopes and they're like, wow, I'd love to have a cabin here versus in the summer. That could be wrong. Maybe people love it in the summer as well. But I'm just saying that there can be uh, factors that you need to know of when you sell. I can tell you in the springs, trying to find the house for rent, as an example, in July, August is just impossible because you've got all the military coming in out, you've got students. It's just a nightmare. Right? Prices go up during those times because everybody's going to crunch. They're looking to find something to buy to live in. So selling then versus selling Christmas Eve, same house, is going to be different. Now, it sounds basic, but time your flips, right? It's like children. We timed our children. We didn't want to be born on Christmas Day or New Year's Eve, right? That sucks. If you were born on one of those days, I think uh, Naomi's sister was born on New Year's Day, right? Right? That sucks. You know, you can, people don't really celebrate you. There's fireworks, but they're not for you. You know, Christmas is already there. They bought you a gift. It's kind of like, ah, that's about two gifts. It's a combined gift. The combined gift's never as good as two separate gifts. Like, you've got to time your children, you know, if you can. Um, <laughs> time your flips, all right? Holding and transaction costs are real, okay? And I'm, gonna, I'm, not, now I'm, not, I'm not being negative on real estate agents, okay? I'm not. They earn their money. They do a lot. But the reality is, is the cost to sell a home just via conventional real estate is going to be 8 to 10% of the value of the home. Can, depends on the market, depends on blah, but right? 8 to 10%. I factor in 8 to 10%. I try and factor 10. Because if I'm, if I'm wrong, then I factored it. And if I'm right, well, I've made an extra 2, two or 4%. But here's the reason why. It's 3% for the, for the selling realtor, 3% for the buying realtor. That's 6. You're not going to get away from that. And then you've got closing costs on top of that. And they can be whatever, but I just factor in 2%. And the other 2% I factor in because realistically a buyer is going to come through and say, well, I don't like this or I don't like that. I'm not comfortable with that. Can you knock it down by a couple hundred bucks, $1,000, 2000 It's just, it happens. If it doesn't, congratulations. If you factored for it, even better. Make sense? So when they show you stuff on HGTV, oh, yeah, we bought this house for this much and whatever, you know, they don't show you closing costs. They don't show you realtor costs. They don't show you loan costs if you have to take out a loan. 
to pay for that product. They don't show you that. So it's like they'll, they'll be like, you know, this person bought the house for 100, they put 20 into it, they sold it for 150, and so they made $30,000 profit. They didn't make nothing. Because on that deal, I guarantee you, they've probably lost 20 grand in just transaction costs. And then if you factor in any sort of uh, loan, they've probably lost money on that flip. They don't show you that because it's not fun to watch. Look, this person did all this effort and made no money. Like that's, you can do one episode like that, you can't do a lot. And keep in mind that your tax at your highest marginal rate if you sell within 12 months. It's basically considered earned income, right? So if you sell the property, the flip within that 12 months, you pay tax on it. It's not long-term capital gain, right? So you have to keep that in mind. A lot of people don't think about the taxes. You know, I think I'm going to make all this money and I've done really well. Especially this, a lot of people get caught out if they're professionals and they make a lot of money, right? Like if they're a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, they're making already good income. This just gets added to the top of that and you end up paying a lot more tax, right? So just keep that in mind. It's not the only thing, but keep it in mind.